My name is Juliana Nicolasian. Also with me is Tanya Fincham. We're with the Oklahoma State University Library, part of the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. Today is Friday, June 15th, 2012, and we're in Shawnee, Oklahoma, interviewing Mark Cannon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for coming. Well, we're going to talk with Mark today about circus. This is part of the um, Circus Oral History Project we're doing with the library. We first want to learn um, a little more about you. Could you tell us uh, the year you were born and where you grew up? I was born in 1951 in Hugo, Oklahoma. And I lived there until 1998. I currently live in, in Shawnee. And, um, Can you tell us a little bit about your parents? Well, uh, I lost my mother a couple years ago. Um, she uh, she was born and raised her whole life in, in Hugo. Uh, we'll get into this later, but they met in in the Hawaiian Islands, wherein as my grandfather took a circus over there, and they met and got married, and uh, he was born and raised in the Hawaiian Islands, and uh, he moved back to Hugo, and he lived there the rest of his life and, and, and died there. And so, uh, they're, like I say, they're both deceased, but uh, my dad had a good life. He, he uh, passed away when he was 86, and my mother was about the same age too. But uh, that's a little bit about it. Well, your, your family has deep roots in Hugo and a strong uh, circus tie to the Hugo community. And it, and it all really starts with your grandparents. Can you tell us about your grandparents, their names, and their profession? Well, uh, my, my grandfather's name was Vernon Pratt, and uh, he, he, if people from Hugo may recognize the name Pratt, there were, there were several brothers, and they were all in the grocery store business. Uh, he had a fascination with circuses, and he attended a circus, I, it's my understanding, over in Arkansas, and it, the, the circus was finishing up the year there. It was, it was the end of their, their time for that year, and they uh, didn't have a place to winter, you know, park everything, and they repaint and rebuild and work on all the trucks and all that, so my grandfather offered to let them come to Hugo and stay out in his, in his pasture at, at a ranch that he owned south of Hugo. And uh, it's my understanding that the next year they, they came and stayed there again and then they eventually bought property and, and the, the circus, the millers, uh, they, they own quite a bit of land on the east side of Hugo now. And it just kind of took off from there. Uh, as I was growing up, I, I can remember there being five or six different circuses. Uh, I lived out south of Hugo, there was one right across the street from us, across the highway, and then out on the east side there were several out there. And uh, that was my granddad, and then my, my grandmother was from there too. She was a Patterson, her name was Jewel Patterson, and uh, she uh, passed away just a few years ago at 103, she was a great. But that's a little bit about them. And at some point, did Vernon start a circus? He did. Uh, and I'm, I, I, I was talking to my cousin, uh, my, my mother's sister said, it's a shame these people have passed away and I, we didn't document it better. But I do know for a fact that he as early as 1947, he had a circus because uh, in 1947, he he took a circus to the White Islands on a ship, and uh, my my cousin, which is his mother, her name was was Rita Joe, and uh, my cousin has shared with me on a couple of different occasions that his mother remembered standing out on the front of the ship and going under the Golden Gate Bridge. But anyway, they, 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 he took this circus to uh, the Hawaiian Islands 
and uh, my my father uh, my father was a uh, electrician there, and he worked for uh, Hawaiian Electric, and uh, he uh, was. It's my understanding that he stayed out at the circus area to make sure you know something went wrong with electricity that he would be there to manage it. And at that point, they met. He met my mother because she uh, she was active in the circus as far as uh, she did stuff on the trapeze and different things. A lot of the pictures, you know, that we we talked about. There's pictures of her doing this stuff, you know. And anyway, they met, and uh, keep in mind, my dad, he, uh, he was born and raised on the Hawaiian Islands, you know, and uh, lived in Honolulu. And in about two weeks, they got married, and he moved back to Hugo and uh, lived there the rest of his life. He was probably born in 21. He came back in 47, so he's probably 25, 26 years old. And they lived there for, for uh, 60 years. Well, that's a big jump from Hawaii to Hugo. You, I'm telling you. <laughs> if you've been to Hugo, you know it. <laughs> but uh, that's how he got here, and uh, that's uh, that, that's a little bit of, of history that I know, you know, took place. Now, go ahead, and I'll get this. Well, when he and your mother returned to Hugo, what did they do? Uh, he, my, my father was in the uh, propane business and he had a plumbing electrical shop and he had, he had uh, some licensed plumbers <coughs> and uh, that's, that's mostly what he did. He had a few other little ventures, they had a bowling alley, he had a miniature golf course, but he, he, he got a truck and started selling propane, you know, to rural areas and uh, it grew over the years. and it, supported us and it's you know it was a profitable business I, we were never wealthy or anything but you know we never lacked for anything but that's what he did and then my mother she she was in the florist business for for years and years i mean probably i don't know 25 years and uh she did that up till just a few years before you know she passed away so did the tie to the circus end after they got back from Hawaii? No, and uh, that's, I, I was discussing this with my cousin, trying to get some bearings on it uh, and some, some facts. But this was in like 47. I know they were in Hawaii. When I, I was born in 51, and in, in, after my third grade year in school, I would have been probably 10 years old and that would have been in 60, 61 or 62. And uh, I got to, after, as soon as school was out, they were up in uh, Kansas or Nebraska. And I got to go up and, and go with the circus and stay with my grandmother and grandfather. And we went through Nebraska and South Dakota and North Dakota. We went all up to the Canada border. And so I know, I know he still had the circus in, in 60, one or two and so that's a span of 14 or 15 years and uh, I, I know I know that it ended shortly thereafter because my grandfather he passed away I think in uh, September 65 uh, he had a heart attack and uh, and I know he had been active in the circus for several years so that was probably 61 or 62 was about the end of his deal the name of that circus that I as I remember it was James Christie Brothers Circus, and uh, we, uh, I have, I can remember, you know, my, my my grandfather, he ran the whole thing, but I would get up about four o'clock in the morning and go with my grandmother, and we'd put out arrows, you know, where the trucks would know where to go. <coughs> I remember I had a big stapler about, it was like a hammer, and she'd tell me which way to point them, and you know, point them down, and tell them to slow down, or right or left, and I, I put them on trees and telephone poles, use that stapler, and uh, we'd get there early, and she and then she would be responsible for getting food for everybody, they had a trailer with a kitchen in it. But uh, that's a little bit of the time frame, as I remember. Mm -hmm. 
That's quite a, an adventure for a young kid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was, uh, like I say, I was about ten or eleven years old, and I got to ride the elephant every day, like in the grand entry. I'd ride the elephant, and then they had a, uh, they had a horse, and they would ask for somebody to come out of the stands, you know. So I'd go down there, and I'd ride this horse and run around the ring. Had a belt on, and had a rope that went up to a like in a car wash, you know, that, that you know swings around, and then this horse would do it, and I would fall off. Of course, I wouldn't fall off because I had the had the rope and I had a big belt on, and it would catch me, and I'd hold on to its tail, you know, and go around and around the ring. And, you know, I was just a little kid, you know, so it's pretty pretty wild. Well, what was the campers like at that time? The camp, what we stayed in, uh -huh. my my. Uh, my grandparents, they had a, it, it looked like an old, I don't think it was an 18 wheeler, but it was, it was pulled, it was a tractor trailer rig, and it was just an old box uh, trailer. And it had a down, and it had a place up over the fifth wheel. And my grandmother was uh, pretty uh, good at, at fixing things up, making them look pretty enough. So she turned it into, you know, house it's pretty crude but had the beds up over the fifth wheel and you step down and she had a little kitchen area and uh, she, they conducted all the business there you know the ticket sales and all that and uh, it was it, there wasn't much to it but it's we you know that's what they lived in that's what they traveled in it's it's not like you see today they weren't airstreams or Winnebago's or anything you know. and I understand water was always an issue uh, it was always an issue Weather. I saw some tents blow literally away, and then all the employees of the circus would have to. The circus would be on the ground. I mean, the tent would be on the ground, and they would they would have to. Everybody that was with the show would have to get out there and have to sew up the rips, you know. So uh, it was a traveling, interesting deal. Did you have siblings? Had three sisters, uh, one older and two younger, and uh, they were around it periodically. But for some reason, I got to travel with it for about two and a half, three months. So uh, got a little, a little, a little exposure to it. So you attended all your school in Hugo? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it was elementary and high. Yes. Oh yes. And I mean, when the summer that I had to go, Sue's school was out, I left, and then I came back. I didn't miss any school. But there were kids, you know, and still are, that were homeschooled, and, you know, they, they would have to do their work as they traveled. But that, that wasn't my situation. It was a, just an opportunity for me to experience it with my grandparents. You didn't get the bug? I did not get the bug. <laughs> uh, but. Obviously, my grandfather had the bug because he, uh, and I, I, I wish I, I wish I knew some facts and figures whether he really ever profited from it greatly or it's just something that that he you know wanted to do. But I mean, if you if you've been around circuses, it's a grind, you know. You set up, tear down, move, and weather and stuff breaking down, and you know. Uh, well, how many children did your grandparents have then? Uh, my, Vernon and Jewel, uh, they had two daughters. My mother, Betty Jean, and then uh, Rita Jo. She was from Corpus Christi, and my mother was born and raised in Hugo. Did any of the grandkids get into the circus business then? No. Never. No one ever uh, went that direction. It, it's interesting down there now. You mentioned that you know the, uh, you know you got to talk to the birds, you know, and you know their kids have got into it. And, and there's the Rawls, one of their daughters. Uh, he finally kind of semi-retired, and he's he's active in, uh, you know, he's been the mayor and on the council and stuff. And uh, they had a daughter, and she married a young man named Fry, Drake Fry, and he they took the circus out. So. There are, I've seen instances where the siblings did follow up, but it didn't happen in, in my family. Did they stay in the grocery business then? 
No, he, he got out, he got out of the grocery business. Uh, and again, I, I don't know the years, but there, there were years that he was doing some of both, uh, but not at, not at the end. Uh, he, uh, he, he, some of the old videos I have have pictures of the, the grocery stores. And, uh, but. We've heard some people say that he invested in other shows in town. You know, I, those those are those are things that you know. I mean, I was uh, I was fourteen or fifteen years old when he died. You know, I never discussed the finances. I I uh, I, I don't think that my grandparents were ever accumulated anything to speak of. But I obviously he he did something. He got to do something that he that he loved. You know, and. Uh, I guess it supported him, you know, but at the end, I doubt if, if there was, if it sold for any amount of money, you know. Uh, they liked it well enough to keep it, keep staying in Hugo, yes, though. Yes, yes. Yeah. Found something else to do. Yeah. Well, and I think the, when people talk about Hugo and Circus, his name is almost always brought up yeah. as being an important part of why Hugo has the circus. Yeah. Well, I think the I think the Millers and the, the original circuses that were there appreciate the fact that he offered the the uh, place for them to, to winter, and they were always grateful. I know in some of the articles you read, his name will appear periodically. You know that giving him credit, you know, for kind of starting that to turn Hugo into Circus Town USA. And there's still a lot of activity down there now. You know, you, you all been there and I, I haven't kept up with it, but you know, there's the elephant breeding program and there's still a few circuses. It's pretty interesting to go out there and look at it. Did he ever perform on the circus or was he just the... You know what, he, he didn't He didn't perform. He, he, was, a, uh, he was a nice looking man. He had a uh, full head of hair, you know, when he passed away, and, and uh, he he didn't perform, but he he trained horses, and he he worked those in the show. I think I think they called it a Liberty Act, and uh, he had I think some of the videos he had one set that were like black and another they were black and white horses, and you know they go in circles and all turn at the same time, rear up, you know, put their feet on the next horse's back. And he did that. And I guess probably he was the ring master. My grandmother didn't perform, but both but my mother and her sister Rita Joe both both performed. <coughs> and there's you know, there's pictures you know, he said there's a lot of pictures and documentation of what they did. And what what did they do? It was it was trapeze and stuff on ropes and uh, swinging ladder. Swing, yeah, swing. yeah, yeah. Did your mother miss it? Well, she didn't do it. She passed her. There was, uh, I think, there was uh, seven years difference in my mother and father's age. And so she got married when they were in Hawaii, so she, she got out of it pretty quick. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know the exact age, but she was probably uh, she was probably 18, 19 years old. Uh, and that was that was the end of the end of it for her. But uh, my grandfather had circuses after that, and I know she didn't. You know, she wasn't active. And her sister? S same way. She she didn't stay in it either. And when they went to the White Islands, I'm going to guess she was probably 14, 15 years old. Are your grandparents buried there in Hingo? Yes, they are. In the you, know, you know, they're not, they're not buried in the what they call the showman's rest. They're married, buried east of there, probably three or four hundred yards. 
but uh, I don't know. I don't know that in '64 when my grandfather died that that, that was started yet. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Y'all may know the history of Shoulders Rest when it was started. Mid-60s, I think. Mid-60s, yeah. And of course, you know, it's real popular, you know, that when you buy two, you buy two plots, you know, and, you know, they're going to be buried next to each other. So, uh, of course, they're, they're close, but not, not in the, that area. So when was the last time you were at a circus? It's been a while. <laughs> uh, I have a son that lives in uh, Greeley, Colorado, and my wife's brother lives in Fort Collins. And the circus from Hugo was in Estes Park just recently, and they all went up, went up to it. Uh, so, a little contact there. I mean, and then, and then. Uh, some of some of our kids. My, I have a daughter uh, that lives in Dallas, and she she went to school with some of the kids that are on the circus now. She still knows them. I think they will kind of you know, keep in touch. Well, circus is a, a big part of the Hugo community. Growing up, could you tell a difference in town? You know, it's it's interesting. I I don't know what people's uh, perception of, of the circus people are, and this this isn't a knock on carnivals, but you know, you, you, some people may not necessarily to be ugly, but we talk about carnies, you know, or that kind of thing. But I can tell you that the circus people, my father was in the propane business, in the plumbing, and electrical, and these people, when they came in, obviously they would uh, get a lot of funds probably before they went back out. My dad did a lot of business with these people, and a lot of them would leave town owing him money. And they and I, he always said they never got cheated. They always paid. They were they were they were a high class bunch of people. Of course, now then there's a lot of the acts come from Argentina, Mexico, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, you could you could tell a difference. I mean, when these people came back into town, I mean, they were, they were an impact, you know, financially. They spent a lot of money. You know, they, they bought auto parts and food and, you know, there's a lot of people that, that uh, benefited from, from trading. So, and, and now then they, they have events, you know, to welcome them in and, and then they usually have the first show there before they go out on the road, they'll, they'll open and you go. So, yeah, it was, you were always, real aware of it. You can go down Kirk Street, which is where the circuses are, and there'd be 25 or 30 elephants, you know, tied up one after the other. And I'd go out there and I'd say, you know, where can, where can you go and see a whole herd of elephants, you know? Pretty interesting. Well, you lived there during the time that DR was still around. Did mm -hmm. you have any interactions with him? Not really. I, I can see him just plain as day, you know, I mean, but I, I didn't, I didn't have any, any dealings with him or, uh, I, I knew who he was and met him and talked to him, but, but uh, don't remember a whole lot about him. I'm sure y'all documented that he died on the road and they froze him and waited till they came in where they could have a proper quite a lot of fanfare, yeah, pretty interesting. Were you down there for the funeral? I was not. But there's, I'm sure you've seen some articles, there's some big articles mm -hmm. written on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, looking back on, on your family's legacy in the circus, how do you hope people remember Vernon Pratt? Well, it's, it's, <coughs> it's my, uh, Memory that that they were they were well uh, liked and thought of in the community. My grandmother, uh, she uh, she was probably the finest, strongest 
Christian woman that, that I've ever met. She was she was remarkable. And uh, of course he you know, he, he died at a pretty young age. But I, I think they were they were very well thought of and uh, it's just that, you know, I didn't I didn't get to experience my grandfather near as long as I did my grandmother. I mean, you know, she was here just a few years ago, you know. Uh, but uh, they were they were well known in the community, and of course, it's not a very big community, but they, uh, I think everybody knew them and had a good reputation. I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking me. How do you stay informed of, of what's going on in, in Hugo? And you still, you still, well, I have, still must. You I, must. Just about everybody's passed away, you know. I mean, but but I, I still have some friends down there, and and I I own some uh, some real estate stuff down there till recently, and uh, like I said, I've got some friends and my my. Uh, Mother and father uh, were divorced along the way, and he remarried. We're, we're close to his second wife, my stepmother. She's a great lady, and so we go down. We we see her, and, and we just you know we we still have contacts down there. We end up back down there, so kind of keep up. Uh, pretty pretty informed about what's going on. You can't live someplace for that period of time, you know. So after high school, what did you do? After high school, I went to college. The Vietnam War was going on. I uh, joined the Army Reserves. I went to basic training, came back, went to OU for a couple years, and kind of hooked back up with my high school sweetheart that I've been chasing since the third grade, and uh, we got we got married, and that's about forty years ago. And we're still married, so that's kind of the whole thing in a nutshell. I came here in '98. Uh, I'd been in the insurance business. I came, I transferred here, and uh, it's been a good move. We enjoy living here. We can say on camera why OU instead of OSU. <laughs> uh, do I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I said OU. Oh, didn't I? Said, I said a bad word, didn't I? So. That's all right. Now, my wife graduated from OSU. Well, good. But I have two sons who graduated from OU. Well, we won't hold it against you. So if you go look in the closet in there, there's. <laughs> we go to all the football games and stuff, so she's kind of converted. <laughs> Well, you, you kind of keep your pulse a little bit on the pulse of the circus. I mean, you grew up in an area that is known for the circus. Yes. Where, where do you think the circus is going to go in the next 10 to 20 years? I know it's kind of hard to predict. Yeah. It's got to be a tough business. I mean, I, I, will, I will say this. I, I don't know that my, my grandparents ever, ever made, uh, you know, a lot of money mm -hmm. in the circus, I, and I and I don't want to speak for the uh, Millers, but I, I know they've done really well. Mm -hmm. And I, gee, I don't know. I guess it. I guess if it's in somebody's blood, they can make it happen, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that the Rawls' daughter, uh, I think her name's Tasha. Is that it? Sasha. Sasha. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I know that they. <coughs> I guess got all of it they wanted. He has a tire center there now, and uh, so I, I guess I guess you you know if you get bit by the bug you know I guess that somebody could make it work. But uh, it's like I say it's it'd be a tough life, and I I don't know who's left in that deal. The, the birds have a couple of daughters. I don't know are they involved? Mm -hmm. and, and you know uh, I don't know how how Gary is. You know they're not they're not not that young anymore. But but you know I still when I go down there I have to make the I have to make the circle. You know and just kind of look at it. You know. 
not that I know what's going on, but it's just something, you know. Drive down Kirk Road. Yes, yeah, drive down Kirk Road, just kind of just kind of drawn to it a little bit. Where in Higo was the uh, original uh, prep property? The ranch, mm -hmm. I call it the ranch. Uh, south, go south of Hugo, like you're going to Paris. Mm -hmm. You know where the road splits and turns into a four lane? You go about uh, two miles and and uh, there's there's a there's a cut in the road there, crossroad, and and there's a sign that says Goodland. There's a you ever seen that mm -hmm. Goodland School? Well, he he pretty much owned from the old highway. There's two highways. There's the four lane, and then what they call the old highway. And uh, if you turn to go down to Goodland, he he owned pretty much from the highway all the way down to Goodland. And uh, that's that's where the that's where they wintered. And that's where, uh, that's where a lot of the, you know, even he had his stuff there. That's where he trained the horses and you know, all that stuff. And is that property still in the family? No. Okay. You know, the the, uh, the old house is still up on the hill. I always kind of wished I'd owned it because the memories, you know, I kind of grew up up there. And uh, a guy named Joe Anderson bought it. And I, I don't know that it's not still in, in their family. Uh, he, he's, he's not alive and I don't know if, if his wife Bernice is or not but I don't know who owns it now to be honest with you. So as a third grader what part of the circus did you enjoy the most? Gee I don't know I just it was I just you know I was real involved in it, you know, and all, you know, like I told you earlier, I got to ride the elephant and the horses, and uh, you know, I would go eat in the with the rest of the people, you know. I mean, I mean, we didn't. There wasn't there wasn't much of a vacation. I mean, it was same deal. It was seven days a week, you know. Of course, I I, I don't know that I had to do any work, so I it was an adventure more than uh, anything else, you know. I mean. Uh, we did. My grandmother tried to to do is we would go to different places. Try to show. We went to the Black Hills. Uh, I remember we went to the Corn Palace, you know, and, and I can I can remember. But there wasn't a lot of time for it. I mean, they were. It was it was a it was a grind. There wasn't anything easy about it. It was a lot of work. There was a lot of work, and something was always broke, or <laughs> you know, they're dragging a truck in, or some problem, you know, somebody not getting along, or, you know, just, you know, it was, it was a tough life. You got to eat in the cookhouse with the, cookhouse. With the rest of the class. I was trying to think of what to call that a minute ago, but it was a cookhouse. Yes. And, and did they it, have to sit at certain places? Did you have assigned seats, assigned? No, I, just, I remember tables and just benches. Okay. And I... I guess the food was okay. I don't remember it being <laughs> bad, but it probably wasn't five star cuisine, you know. Well, you can have popcorn later. I think I got I could have all the popcorn and cotton candy <laughs> that I wanted. I remember I got uh, I got a splinter in my hand and I got blood poison. And I had to go get some shots. But I didn't ever you know, thinking back, if I'd had a kid in the third grade and I'd known he was doing the things that I was doing, I'd have probably had a, had a fit, you know. But I, nothing ever happened, you know. It's the elephant that they had, his name was his, his name was Hank, and he, it's my understanding that he killed a couple of men, and they ended up uh, destroying him, you know, putting him shoot kill him put him to sleep whatever but he was he was a uh, and I wrote I wrote him there you know I wrote him in the grand entry every day and he'd lift his leg up I'd shoot me up there and had a big harness on him you know and I'd hold on to that and, but uh, pretty good memories just your normal summer vacation yeah 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 how many how many third graders get to go on the surface for do you remember some of the smells? Yeah, 
Oh yeah, I mean, you know, they were probably unique. Probably in the cook trailer, or what you call it a minute ago. The, the cookhouse, yeah. The canvas, you know, they roll that canvas up and had a big truck, you know, they'd roll it up. And that's the first thing, they'd unroll that canvas and the elephant, they'd use, they'd use the elephant, you know, just like you see, if you saw the, the movie, you know, that was recently out. And uh, if, if you read that book, there's even some mentions of a couple circuses that were in you know. And, uh, you know, other, other memories I had was is that we grew up south of town. I mentioned where my grandfather's uh, ranch or whatever it was. Well, that, the property actually started where I grew up. It was the old highway and then the property started. And then they came in and, and they cut through with the four lane that goes from Hugo to Paris. And uh, across, across the road from us, there was a circus called Coal Circus. And uh, I can remember going up there, they, there was a barn, they kept the elephant in there. There was a, there was a gentleman, his name was Tandy, T-A-N-D-Y. I'd go up there every day and hang around, you know. And, uh, he, uh, and, and they, they, they wintered there, you know. I had a lot, a lot, of, a lot of exposure there. I remember he, he, was, uh, he was my buddy. I mean, I was a little old kid, you know. He was my buddy. I made him a pineapple upside down cake. I baked it and I was taking it to him. And I was crawling over this fence. And I remember I dropped it and it landed right upside down and just splattered on the ground. I had to go and I made him another one. So. But anyway. Good memories. Yeah, good memories. Well, what are some of the other circuses? that you remember from, from Hugo? The well, there was Carson Barnes and Algy Kelly Miller Brothers, and there was my, my grandfather's circus, at least one of them that I remembered was James Christie Brothers, and I don't even know who James Christie was. Yeah. I have but, come across that name. Yeah, and, uh, you know, but Algy Kelly Miller Brothers was, I guess, the kind of the big, the original, and then Carson Barnes kind of spurred off of there. Y'all probably know more history about it than I do. I've read of the Stevens Brothers. Was there was the Stevens Brothers. And I think my grandfather was, was associated with Stevens Brothers. And see, that's what's a shame that I, that, you know, everybody's gone and we don't have. I mean, obviously he had, he had the bug or he wouldn't have done the thing, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's a little bizarre, you know, that somebody would put that stuff together. And, I don't know if it was for the love of the road or the entertainment or... And not having had done it before, I mean... Yeah, yeah. Or been exposed to it. Yeah, because he was probably, uh, you know, if he did it, he was probably, he was, he was 65 when he, when he died, 64, 65. And he died 65, so he was probably born about the turn of the century. So he was about, you know, he's around probably pushing 50 when he started the thing. I mean, it's not like he, you know, his his family what did it. I mean, he didn't, he didn't inherit it or, you know, he wasn't brought up in it. He just got the bug in middle age, decided to do it. And it worked for a while. Yeah, yeah. And to go to Hawaii with it. Yeah. That's just... And you can, you know, and, and there's his kids right on the front of the boat, I guess, look like something from Titanic, you know, <laughs> going under the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, it probably took, uh, I spoke with a gentleman recently that, that took a sailboat across, it took him about three weeks. I mean, you know, they were probably out in the middle of the water for a couple, you know, at least a couple weeks, 10 days or something. So. <coughs> well, it's a good family legacy. Well, it's, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't stress, I, not just necessarily my parents, but the, from what I know, the Rawls, uh, you've met David and Bobby, well, when I moved here, I had been in the uh, 
Lodge Club with their father here. And uh, I'm telling you, he's, he's as nice a guy as, as I've ever met. And, uh, you know, he, he always spoke well of my granddad. I mean, they, they were good people. I mean, and, and uh, everything I know about the Millers, the Rawls, and all those people that are, you know, that are still down there and their kids, they're, they're, they're high class, good people, you know. Uh, and, you know, you just, you just don't, you know, there wasn't any crimes, you didn't hear anything about stealing or anything bad going on. It was a very honorable bunch of people. Hard working, too. Yeah. I guarantee you they worked. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody yeah. worked. Yeah, everybody worked. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. He had multiple roles, you know. I think even the performers, you know, had to had to chip in and help. Was there anything else you'd like to add or tell us today? That no, I wish I wish I was more of a history buff, but I'm, I'm, I, I, I've tried to pick, you know, when y'all call and talk to my wife, I kind of tried to pick everybody's brain about stuff. Everybody's kind of, we, we didn't document it, you know, so. I know it all happened because I was there and, and I have videos and you know you see pictures and just kind of an interesting kind of an interesting uh, lifestyle for those people. And you can say you rode an elephant. Rode elephant. All my, all my family got to ride elephants <laughs> and all the home videos everybody everybody rode elephants. And they were all Hank or someone? Oh no they were different, different elephants. Yeah. I just remember this particular uh, He'd do his show, and they had a like an 18 wheeler, and this elephant lived in the back half of it. Probably somewhat cruel life, you know. But I remember he'd get mad, and he'd hit on the steel cage. But uh, that that breeding program down there's. Well, thank you so much for giving us a little bit well, of hey, background I, on your grandparents. We really yeah, appreciate I, I, it. Yeah, I'd like to see the whole thing put together. I could probably learn some stuff. Thank you. Uh -huh.